All right. I'm getting this up as soon as I can, but we got data mines for January. So two pairs in here we already know. They were leaked, unfortunately, as sad as that situation is, but that's a different story for another day. We have a lot of stuff coming. If you care about spoilers, which I guess why, why wouldn't you because you clicked on this video, but here they are. We have new Eggmons, which those I'm not really going to go over. We have Dawn is going to be in the Lodge. You got you got seasonal characters being Dawn and Liz and Lysia, which we already knew. Um, I, three and four star grids being Caracosta, Conkelder, Rapidash, and Wally's getting a power boost. Kukui and Lycanroc are getting an EX. Then fair grids we're getting three instead of two. We're getting Garchomp. He has he's now full. She's now fully powered. Gardevoir and Hatterene already. Hatterene is the one that surprises me here. So we're going to go over all these slowly. And I have the content update he here as well for any dates and everything. Which I haven't really read through in great detail. Because I just want to get that as soon as possible. So I'm just going to go over the, the new fair unit first. This is our only fair. We have... We have Gar... Uh, Garmar. We have Diancy and Cygna Suit Diantha. So, Shiny Diancy. We're getting our second Diancy already. Another Diamond Storm character. So, so just to go over this very, very briefly, I just want to snap through these. Uh, lower speed on it, on entry. This will activate upon Mega as well, because it's GG Mega Evolves. Honing Hit, able to fully support herself with attack and crit with three moves, but then team defense cannot be lowered. And, and none of this changes off Mega either. So just going off your stats. Oh, almost 475 attack is, isn't bad at all. Rock Tomb. So you'll be using this to max out your stats. Rock Wish. So she's automatically worth it. Buddy Diamond Storm. Exact same activation condition as Red and Pikachu. When the zone's up, you can use it. When it's not there, you can't. Uh, lowers the target's defense by 2. Raises all out of defense by 2. So she is very strong. When it comes to, like, adding phys physical bulk or even just helping deal more damage. Because, like, most rock types are physical. This is going to be great with that. Especially because it's AoE as well. It's an AoE minus 2 drop. Current rises. Sync out to minus 1. When the user's defense raise, raises the special up to the same amount. So this pair is actually viable as, as a tank. Graduate healing as well. If the user is mega evolved, reduce sync out to by an additional 1. So minus 2. And increases physical next by 2 ranks. But to then sync move, this is a tech pair. Yeah, tech. I, I'm not stupid. All right. And because it, it, it is a mega, it's not as powerful as most other ones are. But uh, power increases when zone is rock zone. So yeah, grid now. Very, very quickly. One out of five, you're not getting much. Two out of five, you get sand stuff. You get move good acceleration. You get healing off rock zone. So that pairs very well with the HP regen, very similar to what Red and Pikachu can do, where you just heal. So Tank Diancy is definitely viable. Uh, three out of five, you get access to Tough Cookie, which is very good because she raises her own defense. Sand Fortress, you already have Team on Team on Banks, so that's fine. Rock Tomb trip up twice, so you always got and by an additional two, you get another tripwire. Cake Walk for your Sync Nuke. You get Sync Damage Guard. Powers up sync moves when they use special defenses raised, so that'd be curtain rises. Movie getting acceleration, rock push and PR. So yeah, you just get a lot of stuff off two out of five. Three out of five. No, four out of five, sorry. Yeah, all that was three out of five. Blech. I I'm trying to go too fast here. Four out of five, you get team sharp entry, that is very good. And propulsion. First time you use rock zone, you get you get minus one, minus one sync countdown. So that is very nice to have. Then five out of five, to the surprise of no one, another zone extension. Wally has it. It's kind of the standard for fares with, with zones at this point. Then soften up, which helps your sync move crit guaranteed. So, th so that is very good as well. Overall, very, very strong pair. Definitely worth it if you want to go for it and go all the way with it. But you don't have to. I think that's like the bottom line here. You don't have to. 
So that is the fair. Now, Chestnut's in here. We have another Carlos Gen Pool, which it, which if you know if you know the Gen Pools at all, the only two on the Carlos ticket is Clement and Serena. So you should own both of them, at least three out of five. Even from just pulling, you just get them. So finally, something else to be added to that ticket in the future. Kit is actually not that bad. Also, support EXs are super good. Team Tonga, Dauntless Defender, raise defense and special defense by one when you nullify and attack when in defense imposter. So, spiky shield, block and charge, charges move gauge by three when you nullify and attack. So, nullify, get defenses and move gauge, restores MP by one. So, because spiky shield has MP, you're restoring your spiky shield and your potions. So spiky shield, you're restoring potions, you're restoring, and you can top off attack and crit because this is two and one. So so with sync burst, that becomes three. Sync move, obviously support ex vine whip, something to help chip down, chip down stuff. You get power reserves, and recovery stuff, potion stuff as usual. Spi spiky shield NPR, and you get TM shielded. So you raise defense. Sync, sync, you get Rejuvenate, so even more move gauge if you choose to go, go that route. Vigilance. So, yeah, 1 out of 5, not getting much. 2 out of 5, Team Wise Entry, Team Sentry Entry to help buff up your defenses. Move gauge Acceleration, if you, if you have Grassy Terrain, Grassy Terrain. And Status Condition Immunity. PR, you're not really going to use, let's be honest here. But then Max Out Grid. You can also lower attack as well with uh, Attack Trap, so that's not bad. 100% uh, chance of increasing the physical movement, so all sync by one when you nullify and attack. Oh my god, I didn't read that at first. What the fuck? Uh, endurance is pretty good as well. 100% chance of reducing count by one when you nullify defensive posture. This effect can only be activated once. So if you like counting, this is good and this is good. These two make three out of five so worth it by itself. What the fuck? What the actual fuck? Okay, yeah. So, she's definitely worth a 3 out of 5 off tickets in, in the future. Like, she's Gen Pool. That's the best part about this. She is Gen Pool. That is ridiculous. Okay. Uh, was there any other Gen Pool character? Or any other characters that are on here? Seasonals. Okay. So, Seasonals. Let's go over you. Rapidash. Rapidash and Liza. So this is a strike pair. So AoE. This pair is interesting to say this. I'm going to go over the skills first. Fairy Shift. Important later. Super Sync 9. 100% chance of applying Super Effective next. And Team Antitoxin. So quick attack. Uh, quick move. Pretty, pretty decent power. Dire Hit Plus. Giga Impact. I think this is our first Giga Impact character. So this is like physical hyperbeam, as we know, has ramming speed. Like, bang! What the fuck? That that tank pretty hard. Battle Spectacular raises attack and special attack and speed by four. Star rank increases physical next by one to three at random. I don't like that. You can also give it super prep, which is very good. But I don't like how the physical move next is random. It's guaranteed something, but that is random. Stop it. Just stop it. Okay, grid-wise, 1 out of 5, you're getting a decent bit of quick attack power and giga impact power. Otherwise, nothing really much. You dig In fact, you get all the giga impact power because those two are just are just the accuracy. So you can get so so you can get all the Get impact powers. Two out of five, you get Dragon Guard. Weird vibes, precognition for psychic terrain, which is what. That's weird. Bronze Sync, when your attack is up, power goes up. Acceleration, Fairy Zone, whatever. Quick, quick, quick attack, MPR. Quick attack, fast track, so you can raise your own speed up to plus six. Yeah, plus six. Then super duper effective, three. So with like a 100. So like it can hit decently for zero move gauge. So like that that's not bad at all. 
But then you can get Defense Crush at 3 out of 5. You can get Sync Freebie. So you would get Super Effective next and Free Move next off of, off of your Sync. You get Inertia, which you can plus 6 speed if you go the Fast Track route. Ramming Speed, you can also get plus 6 speed if you go the Fast Track route. Uh, TM Super Prep, so that is good with this. TM, crit TM Critical Eye, so with this, you only need a Dire Hit All Plus. When Wounds Goal Stability, stats can't be lowered. Fine. So this pair is... This pair is a good Fairy Striker, because we don't have many Physical Fairies. Like, Physical Fairies, it is... What? Grim Snarl. You technically count. Zashin te te technically counts. Gramble. And Azumarill is needing a strike. So, like, this isn't... For very physical, this is probably going to be our best bet. Especially with the AoE sync. Grimstone takes a while to set up. This is, I think, quicker? Yeah, yeah, this should be quicker. When it comes to setup. So, she's kind of worth it for that alone. But do I like the kit? No, not really. Then we have another ghost tech in the form of Dawn and Oricorio. So... When stats raises are when stats raised, double it. When stats are lowered, double it. Extra special ghost damage deal additional damage to, to the target when the when the user's Pokemon uses a target target targeting the opponent. When it is a special ghost, this additional damage is not affected by some stats changes. So when you use Revelation Dance, you get extra damage. This is literally Dark Rise, or it should be based on the wording. So that's an extra 10 BP. I personally hate how this works, so I don't like it. But the stat up, stat down is very good. So grab bag, pumps a chance of lowering a stat at random, which doubles with double drop. So if you have grab bag, that's good. Feather Dance, minus four attack, so, so, you, so you can max that in two turns. Tear dance, you can confuse, and you get you get four move gauge by it from that. That's fucking crazy. Perfect dance applies stat reduction effect to allow the field of play. Restores HP by restores the user HP by approximately four percent and raises evasion by one stat rank. That should be plus two with this. But whatever. Uh, but then built in rising tide with access to sync power flux. And interference sync. So her sync can hit very hard. Tech pair. I feel like I should emphasize that. Yeah, tech. So that can hit like pretty hard actually. Now, one out of five. Not getting much as usual. Two, six power. Two out of five. You get quick tempo. You get move gauge refresh. Quick cure. You get master healer. So that's healing 50% of your max HP. And with that, it's plus six. It's plus sixty. Team NPR. If you need another heal, for example, or more vision, stop hit hitting yourself. So this character will actually be viable for solos, solo CS stages, because because the whole goal is to let them hit themselves in, in confusion. Tear dance MGR. You really don't need that because of charge charge affliction. If you go that route, then three out of five same power flux recuperation power posture to to. To, to beef up uh, Revelation Dance. Now the mess here, as I said, safety tether. When you sink, everyone get, gets Endure. Grab bag, went over that, and interference sink. So this pair is going to be a very strong ghost sinker. Deep buffer is viable. Confusion of Flyer is viable. Tank is semi-viable because you restore your own HP by a decent amount. And, and you debuff attack, so like a physical tank isn't a bad idea with this. But yeah, Oricorio is going to be good, but is it going to be like the best Ghost Striker to ever exist? No. Not in my opinion, at least. So that is the fair. Seasonals, Gen Pool. Now we're getting a free character as well. Azumarill. Kylie and Azumarill. So you don't have an EX yet, so I'm not going to have EX there yet. I'm just going to have that be 20. Skills, quick tempo when you enter the fight. You get movie movie gauge acceleration. This is a support, by the way. So when you do get an EX, that'd be very good. Flame proof and flame guard. So you're meant to tank physical attacks. 
Tank for physical fire. X defense all. Drain kiss that, that, that you get stat leech off of. And smart cookie. So you can increase the, the damage done. That's not interesting. Uh, bubble beam. So you can, on a roll four, so you can get, so you can make her a speed debuffer as well. So that's not a terrible idea. Strong stylish, raises special attack by two, raises special defense all single by one, and applies gradual healing. So that's two uses, so that's plus four, plus two, and gradual healing. Sync, whatever. But you do get crit critical hit defense. Now, because, because this is a free pair, let's look at everything, right? Grass Guard, Ice Guard, Viable Tank, because that's the damage reduction. First Aid 2, Panic Button, you have another source of movement acceleration. Team Wise Entry, raises Special Defense on Entry. Bubble Beam stuff, Stat Leech, a any of the following stats. When you, when you attack, you get that stat. So, Smart Cookie throws me off a little bit. It should have been the Defense one. But whatever, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna like stress over it. So yeah, Azumarill is all right. I think she's fine. If you're to get an EX, way, way, way more viable. Okay, so that's most of this. I guess I could go over Warm a Dam. Lodge pair. So if you have Dawn and Torterra from the Sinnoh tickets, which we got a lot of Sinnoh tickets, so you should have at least one F5 Dawn. Uh, healthy healing, start start with HP regen, remove status conditions, and move MGR four. So struggle bug, special attack debuffer, viable. X special attack all can top off special attack. Giga drain has some form of healing. With insect healing and verdant healing, so you if you have grassy terrain. And bug zone up with your HP regen. I want to try that now. I think that'd be like very, very funny with Ingo as a sink nuke, or, or Selby would be the nuke. Eh, whatever. <clears throat> Sorry. Big stretch raises speed and special defense by two for all allies. Then sink is whatever. This is a support. Doesn't have an EX, but. So, Struggle Bug on, on, on a roll. Raise the chance of learning. Is that a chance for an additional one? Okay, that's weird. Turbo Turf for recovery. Smart Cookie to buff up Giga Drain. Team Sharp Entry, very good for a support. TM Shielded, so it his defense. MPR. Sync Regen, Vigilance, Evasive Rush. So when when if if you were to get an EX, if when you do use support EX, you would get evasion. That is good. M move gauge when when enemy moves miss. I think she's very good as a support, but wants the EX. Let me EX her. I would actually do it. I think she's actually very good. I think she's actually good. Okay, so that's all the free stuff and stuff we're getting now for the fair. Grid extensions. This is what you've been waiting for, probably. We're getting two fairies. Bede and Diantha. I'm going to go over Diantha first. So we all know what she does, right? She got on a roll and speedy entry, too. In interesting. So, TM Propulsion, time to shine. So that that'll help with... Uh, so that'll help with, with faster setup. Satisfied Snicker. 100% chance to lower special attack by one when the user against the target is successful. So Dazzling Gleam, you can now have an AoE special attack dropper. Recharging Strike regenerates a move gauge. So you use Dazzling Gleam, for example. You get three move gauge back. So that so that's pretty good. Uh, but then when, when you sink, you restore your HP by 10% for the first sink. So, does this really change much? No. But it does help her with move gauge. And it helps her with countdown. Or if you want someone else to... And another way to apply special attack down. So, it's like... It doesn't do much for her. But it's not bad. 
Now, Bennett, this really fucking shocked me. Because, because he didn't, he didn't need this. He came out pretty recently. So this shocked me when I saw it. Another G-Max Smite Power. What the fuck? Max Countdown 2. Okay. Another Maximum Super Powered 1. So that rounds this up to 6. I can count. Recuperation. When you when you sink, you restore 40% HP. Then Max Damage Guard. But then Unbending... Wait, no, I already said those. I am mixing myself up. If you want the power for G-Max Smite, I would recommend it. Because that shit's going to hit hard as hell. Otherwise, he didn't need this stuff. So I'm just confused why. Like, I'm genuinely just confused. Now the one I've been waiting for. Look at this fucking brick of a grid. Oh my god. Garchomp, my sweet. I've been waiting for fucking ever. For... I, I joked about this. So many times. I joked about this happening. They just filled it and said, here, take a brick. So she got Surging Sand 2 and Burstin. But then for the 5 out of 5 stuff, she got Slash Critical Strike 9, so you can use her as a single target. And she got Dust Kicker, Sandstorm after, after, after the user sync moves. Then she got Sand Alert, and first sync defense minus 2 all. So when you sync... The enemy, all the enemy's defenses go down by two. This isn't as good in my opinion, but if they don't buff their defenses, it could be a good way to just smack them. If, if this was like physical next or something, I would fucking love it, but I'll, I'll take what I can get. So with this, she can permanently keep sand up by herself. You are your own support. You can max out your own attack. You can max out your own crit. You need a little help maxing out your own speed. You have damage modifiers out the ass. And you provide your own sand. She is ridiculous. I, In terms of self-sufficiency, I think she takes it as best ground DPS because her only competition is Groudon. Like, I'm sorry. I think she might outdo Nido King. I really do. This might be bias. But she's definitely top three. If not, top two. Like, I'm sorry. She is ridiculous. Did I open that? Damn. That, that was an accident. Like, expect a whole fucking video on Cynthia in, in the future. But I digress. Uh, Kukui and Lycanroc is getting an EX. They're tech. So that is just a power bump. Wally's getting an extended grid as well, but this is a power boost, not 5 out of 5. So power boost wise, you got ferocious moves. So you can actually max out your own attack and special attack. That's good. You got dire hit critical eye 2. So one dire hit raises your crit by, by all three. So this is a plus plus. You got, you got an HP note for some reason. And powers up the user sync moves when sync powers up the user sync move when the user's speed is raised. Now he gets speed from post haste, and mega it's z it's fast track as well. So this would really benefit the mega more, personally. Does this do much for him? It, it helps him set up faster and more effectively without needing as much help because. This, I'm sorry, is not it. This ain't it. If, if you're like Wally, if, if you have him as your main fighting DPS, hey, it's viable. Now, Master's Day stuff. We have a Martial Grid. He didn't really have much. So we got Staggering. 
so you can rock smash stagger stuff super duper effective tough sink he is a strike so that'd be a in the future tm berserker so you can max out your your own attack on a roll for rock smash relentless instant injury for rock smash sharp entry so you can get your crit rate up by one super desperate when you're in a pinch okay so this pair can max its own defense as well so for a physical tank it's eh, what's your defensive stat looking like technically not yaks but whatever 180 600 hp I would have you as a defense debuffer with the option to sink, but this is single target. So I think it's fine. Flinch, defense drop. It's something. Do I think it makes you viable? No, personally. Now, now let's get Caracosta out of the way. You don't really have much going for you either. You have you have Aqua Tail as defense all. Uh, you have Redirection and Endure, Rock Tomb, and Defense Raise the Greg Prime of this move. You did you didn't get any other modifiers, so that's not the best. Team Pinpoint Entry, all everyone's actually goes up. Speed down. So like base 60 move. Eh. First aid, whatever. Rain gear is nice for a tank option. Because you're being able to pull everyone anyway. Team sync cure. Recuperation is probably better. Next defense barricade, so you can max out defense. Unyielding is nice. Otherwise, this is, isn't all that great, honestly. Architel of Gear 9, so that one costs one bar instead of two. So, like, this isn't that great, personally. I don't think it does much for him. I really don't. Now, now the one that I've personally been looking forward to, Blaine. Also, environment. This was the OG Sun user for the longest time. Uh, fire Spin as well for Trap. Like, 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 this is actually very, very nice. Solar Sync. So you have three suns now. Burn Synergy, whatever. With a hostile environment, that's nice. So that's three technically. You have a 10, 40% chance. Sunny Disposition, Speeding Sun is nice. Solar Flare with with the increased power to Trapped. Fire Spin Flyer, I guess you could also Confuse now. Po Pokey Trap. Pinpoint Entry, Interference Sync. So like his Sync damage is actually decent you can have him as your fire sink nuke and have it be like at least fucking decent so i think without an ex he'll still hit hard if you want a fire dps the only thing you need is a consistent crit rate and the ability he can actually max out his own attack he can max out his his, his attack he, he can trap, so Interference Sync is popped. Sword Flare, you just popped some before. Yeah, he can actually be fine all by himself. I'm actually thoroughly surprised by this. Yeah, Blaine's actually really good. All that all the, I need is him to get an EX and I'm set. Because I had him 20 out of 20. For people who remember the Altaria Extreme Battle. The one that was a pain in the ass where you needed Trap and Weather. Because of it was the Flygon one. That was it. Yeah, so I used Blaine for that. And because he wasn't tanking enough hits. Because I had to use him as tank. I forgot what the team I had to use was. I had to make him 20 out of 20. In order to actually tank hits. So I, if he gets in the X, I'm done. I'm cooking. I am spitting, if you will. I think that's everything when it comes to pairs. Yeah. Pairs, that's it.
Now, content, dates and everything. So we're getting Blissey. Via comes the 9th. Legendary, Legendary Arena Moltres missions, also the 9th. Remember, still you still have to do Latios, I think, and is already gone. Story, story event. Another rival challenge thing. New Year's challenge, daily battle. So this 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 gonna be more gems and whatnot, and other free stuff. No no no. The story event coming the first. Egg, egg event the sixth. Uh, villain event, Kalos villain arc, with Sycamore's EX. I forgot to mention that Sycamore's getting an EX support EX. Very good. Extreme battle. Solo event. This is with, I think, I think this is the Zoom Row, so that's coming the 16th. Grass type event. Legendary Gauntlet has Reggie Rock. I think Latios. Let me double check this really quickly. Someone mentioned it. I don't remember where it is. Sorry, this is taking so long. It's Regirock, Latias, and Yuxi. I was close. So, Yuxi is one of the more annoying ones, unfortunately, but it's not bad. Master's Day 25th, as usual. Daily Scout. Final Five Poker Fair Scout. This will include. I don't know who's being added to this because Dawn is the Lodge Fair, whatever. Seasonal. The first, also the first, so they come the same day. We're getting two Poker Fair selects. I'm not entirely sure who's on both of these. I'll have to look into that, but those will be their own videos that are coming the first. So I have to prepare that. Two Fair selects. Five, uh, I think it was 5k gems apiece for 25, but then you select who you want after, so that's very good. Like These are like the best things to spend your money on, and I'm not even kidding. I need, I need to have pay gems too, actually. So, Diantha is coming the 12th and is here for almost, like, it's here for almost two months. So, you have time. We get, like, 31 to 34k gems this month. So, you're guaranteed either Diantha or one of the Master Fairs that are out right now that isn't, well, one of the Master Fair reruns, I should say. If you've been spending on Serena and Callum, you can probably get a little bit further, but I don't think you're guaranteed. I don't think you're guaranteed, but N, N, Steven, and Lily, you're guaranteed one of them. Shauna comes the 16th. Skip, gen pool, whatever. Type specific, whatever. B to come back the 29th. That's third. Dumb and idiot. Another rally coming the 9th. I love these rallies. Story event. Yada, yada, yada. Okay. But then Villanark is the 12th. So, yeah. I don't know when all the power boosts are coming. Like, I think Cynthia's is going to be uh, with the with the fair selects. But I digress. That is it for the update. If you guys think I missed anything, be sure to let me know in the comments. But, yeah. Let me know who you're most excited for. Because, for me, it's Garchomp. You guys are going to get... Easily a 50 minute video on Garchomp at some point in the future. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.